Welcome to NASA Launchpad. I'm your host, Scott Bednar. We've talked about some awesome NASA research using transit methods to study exoplanets. You know, exoplanets, the planets that are outside our solar system. NASA's Kepler mission and the observations done by Dr. Deming at Kitt Peak National Observatory are both looking at really far away worlds to see just what they can learn about these places. But the use of the transit method doesn't just serve scientists looking so far away from home. In fact, our closest planetary neighbor, Venus, completes transits across our sun. For more information on these Venus transits, let's check in with Dr. Janet Luman, a scientist at the University of California Space Sciences Lab. A Venus transit occurs when Venus crosses the disk of the sun as seen by an observer. It's like a solar eclipse in that Venus is located on the line between the Sun and the Earth and therefore blocks some of the Sun's light. However, in a Venus transit, the amount of sunlight blocked is very small compared to a solar eclipse, and so the observer who is unaware will never notice it. Venus's circular shadow is much, much smaller than our Moon's shadow. Even though Venus is nearly the size of the Earth, it is much farther away than the Moon. In clear weather, Venus transits are visible with the naked eye or with a small telescope, which is why they became popular in the 1600s. So unlike the transits observed by the Kepler mission or by observers using huge astronomical telescopes, the Venus transit is one that you can actually see for yourself. Now remember, you should never look at the sun directly. So in order to observe the Venus transit, you need to use a safe viewing technique, either with protection, solar filters, or projectors. For more information on these safe viewing techniques, go to NASA's Sun Earth Day website at sunearthday.nasa.gov. The most recent Venus transit actually took place on June 8, 2004. And at that time, researchers were able to gather a lot of information. For starters, they were able to verify the distance in AU, or astronomical units with globally organized efforts and 21st century technology looking at parallax. What's parallax? Well, let's hear from Dr. Sten Odenwald, NASA astronomer at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. The answer is that astronomers used a geometric technique called parallax to determine the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Parallax is the apparent change in position of an object when you look at it from two different stations or points of view. It sounds mysterious, but you use this technique all the time. For example, let me show you how parallax works by using my thumb and that rocket in the background. First, hold your thumb out at arm's length. Now look at your thumb with your left eye open and your right eye closed. What do you notice about the position of your thumb? There seems to be an apparent change in position of your thumb from two points of view, your left eye and your right eye. Your brain uses this information to figure out how far away things are from you. By observing the apparent shift in position of Venus against the background of the solar disk as seen from two different places on Earth, astronomers were able to use this parallax shift to determine the distance from the Earth to the Sun. But that's not all. Aside from Earth-based observations, the TRACE satellite was able to observe the Venus transit, and it captured amazing images and videos of that June 2004 transit. Take a look at a few of these. Wait a minute, that last one's not Venus. It's actually the transit of Mercury across the Sun in 2003. That's right, Mercury transits across the Sun just like Venus, but Mercury transits much more often. In part because Mercury is closer to the Sun and it orbits it more rapidly. While transits of Mercury happen about 13 or 14 times a century, a transit of Venus only happens four times every 243 years. And researchers can predict all of these events because planets move in virtually fixed orbits. So the patterns of the orbits can be mapped. It's sort of like watching the turn signals on two cars sitting at a stoplight. The blink timing for each vehicle is different, and they probably started at different times. But usually, the pattern will line up for one perfect blink, and then off again. Similar idea. And in fact, the transit of Mercury and Venus do line up, so they take place at the same time. The next time that will happen, try July 26, the year 69,163. So I think you're kind of out of luck for seeing that one. But you don't have to wait that long to catch a single transit. The next Venus transit will take place on June 5th and 6th of 2012. So you should be able to catch a glimpse for yourself. Make sure you don't miss it though, because the next one won't be around until December of 2117. I guess we'll have to leave that one for the next generation or two of NASA scientists. And mark your calendars now. The next transit of Mercury will take place May 8th, 2016. Well, that's it for now. Until next time, I am Scott Bednar, and thank you for watching NASA Launchpad. Take it easy.